many typefaces have different font styles and weights. Font weights come in different many flavors. Some typefaces have a wide variety of weight choices, with some fonts only have a few. I love using a font like Railway or a Gil Sans because they offer a full suite of weight choices. Font weights impacts a design by emphasizing the appearance of a font, by making it bold or making it light. Bold weights are strong, have high impact and grab your attention. They almost convey a sense of yelling or talking in a louder voice that can help you highlight what is most important to the viewer. Call to actions are usually in a bold weight as those are very important to highlight to the viewer. Lighter weights, especially the lightest, which would be a thin weight, can feel streamlined and modern. They could be a way to highlight something by being soft and subtle. Take for instance something like cancer, not something you want to yell out to the world, as it could be scary. But a thinner weight choice looks nice here, almost calming the viewer instead of making them feel provoked. Lighter or thin weights cannot be too small in size. I usually do not make them smaller than 8 points, as lighter fonts tend to be hard to read at a certain size level. There are lighter weights, bold weights, and now everything in between, which are your regular and semi-bold weights. Regular weights are perfect for body copy. Using a bold weight for body copy can make it seem loud and distracting, especially if there's a large block of text. I want to talk about spacing and design. Spacing can have a great impact on how type is not only perceived, but creates the tone for the design piece. Wide or tight spacing. That's the big decision a designer needs to make when working with type and headlines. Wide spacing between a few words, or a single word for example, can elevate the type to make it seem more elegant and high-end. Wide spacing in a longer phrase or paragraph can seem a little overwhelming. Tighter spacing can make a design have a sense of urgency. It could also help make a strong type seem cohesive and connected. Wider spacing in lowercase letters almost never works well. I suggest if you're going to do a headline or a phrase with wider spacing to make sure you use uppercase, as uppercase characters stand alone stronger than lowercase as they're more balanced and heavy in structure. As we reviewed before, kerning is a term used for the manual spacing between characters. Kerning is very important as not all characters in a font will have perfect spacing by default. Sometimes an A and a W will need to have the spacing closed just a hair for them to feel more connected. This is an example of me manually adjusting the spacing between characters in Adobe Illustrator. Just small tweaks in the spacing can make a word or phrase feel more polished than just the default spacing. We also reviewed in an earlier lesson, the spacing between sentences is called letting. You can see how having wide spacing or letting between the sentences can affect the overall look and feel of a block of copy. Wide spacing and a smaller block of copy can help the block of text expand to a larger part of the design, if there's plenty of white space to cover, of course. Tight spacing can help the block of text feel more together and read more as one unit. Of course, with anything in design, there's a thing as too much or too little. Be careful about your letting. It can make or break your design. A good rule to follow is to use tighter spacing or letting in short two or three line subheadings or headlines. Wide spacing between only two or three sentences can make the second or third lines feel kind of disconnected and not appealing to the eye. When it comes to alignment and typography, you have many weapons in your arsenal. Nothing beats the power of left alignment and anchoring text and providing a strong balance in your design, especially with longer headlines and phrases. Left alignment can make longer text more stable and grounded in feeling. If I center align the same block of text, it seems to lose something. Center alignment with shorter words and phrasing can be very powerful though. Right alignment can still be useful though, although I use this alignment the least when it comes to typography. Even when it makes sense to use right alignment like in this example, sometimes it has a stronger anchor point using left alignment. There's something about reading from left to right that is challenged when you try a right alignment. I do think that right alignment can still be used to help balance out designs. Take for instance this photo. I left align the phrase of color to help balance the overall design. The design is heavy on the left because of that photo. The right alignment of the phrase of color 
helps to counter that strong left-sided photo and creates an overall balance in the piece, so it does not feel heavy on one side or the other. Alignment doesn't always have to be the same throughout the entire headline. Sometimes you can have a little fun and break the mold by trying a right, left, right, left alignment, as long as the words flow in order down the page and are legible. Also, do not feel like text has to go in straight lines. They can have curves, bends, and show movement like in this example, where the typography surrounds the subject. Text can also wrap around objects to show movement. It feels like the type and the photo belong together as one. They are one cohesive design unit, and that's a wonderful thing. If we can somehow fuse design elements together like this, it helps people get almost immersed into the design, and it makes our job easier communicating complex ideas and information in simple ways. The cool and trendy thing to do in design today is to have text go behind objects, like they're weaving in and out of layers and becoming one unified element. Be careful to make sure any text you put behind objects is legible and readable. The last thing you need is a really clever, cool headline hidden behind a photo that the viewer cannot read. It would be a shame. But you can do incredible things by having the text and objects interacting in this layered way. Magazines do this all the time with their front covers. Sometimes vital letters are covered up, but you can still make out what the word is or phrase because it's very obvious. Take for instance this watermelon graphic. You know it says watermelon even though two vital characters are covered by it. The photo matches the words, so your brain fills in the gaps of information. You can always have an object break up words in a phrase like this example. It is fun to play with type and photos together. In design, making things playful, fun, unique, and interactive are all part of the goal. Understanding that playful nature is something that takes time to master. Play around with different photos and type and practice this playful dance.